Hello, hello, I'm Katz and welcome to today's video. My speculation was correct and there is indeed a Pogo, an ancient Pogo, just before the 2X Ancients and we are prepared for this exact situation as we planned for in the previous Shard Pool session where we participated in the bonus summon rush for the Incarnate in order to make the fusion a little bit easier for myself to complete and to eat into my ancient shard stockpile that's been a little bit too high for a little bit too long. So this is the situation we prepared for. We are going to try and see what we can get from the Pogo event and that stands for pull one get one for anyone who is unfamiliar with the term that I prefer to use. As always with these they are usually in the middle of the week and there is no accompanying event or tournament so there is no summon rush champion chase going on so we can jump straight into the portal and go over the overall shard count. So 684 on the ancients and so despite our pull session last time we still have a substantial amount of ancient shards 197 on the voids 6 on the primals and then 51 on the sacred shards. And of course the most important thing to think about when you're considering this type of event is how close you are to mercy so we pop up the mercy tracker on the screen here and you can see that as a result of our last session we are 47 shards away from entering mercy and then worst case 20 more ancient shards to guarantee ourselves a legendary so that's not a bad deal as we talked about in that shard pull session where even if we didn't get anything which we didn't getting a legendary that is we'd be in a very good contention or very good proximity to mercy within a reasonable amount of shards so we're guaranteed a legendary within 67 ancients which is very very cheap in order to get ourselves to legendaries. In terms of who we're looking for, in this case, as always with the Pogo event, I go through my full primary wish list because we are going to be getting two legendaries. So number one is Valkyrie. Number two is a Poison Exploder, Xavier or Eleanor Rill. Number three is Molly Tankard. Number four is Lord Shamfort. And number five is Elva Autumnborn. Now there is no 2X. So we're not going to see a substantial amount of epics. We're going to see a substantial amount of rares. But nonetheless, we are still on the lookout for a couple of Lady Mikage epics. And of course, any dupe epics for empowerment will also be beneficial. So without further ado, let's get into the pulls. We've got just enough space. We've got some cash and hopefully we get some pretty decent luck, even though in this case, luck is somewhat guaranteed as far as getting legendaries, but the quality is what we're hoping for. So let's jump in and see what we can get. And hopefully we get it sooner rather than later. But uh, as always with the Pogo event, I am prepared to go all the way and that is the best way to approach them. And so make sure that you have the resources to do so if that is your plan. Otherwise, you could invest a ton of shards and get absolutely absolutely nothing and have to fill it in with money and or gems in order to compensate and I do not recommend putting yourself in that situation. Not errant, really underwhelming epic so not much to say about him. So we are 10 in so maximum of 50 ish to go before we are guaranteed to get it and at this point i'm honestly expecting to enter mercy and have the mercy proc be the one that gets us the legendary so wuji pretty decent champion very squishy hard to keep alive i think she has like eleven thousand base hp even when six star fully ascended but uh she does have like aoe block buffs and it can be pretty useful in some niche hydra compositions so third 10 pop, here we go. Is this going to be the one bunch of rares? Not looking likely. Okay, so we're still not in mercy. Okay, rare tax, that's fair. That is totally fair. Generally speaking, I have been fairly lucky as of late if you watched my uh, recent shardless summon uh, session. And so I guess we do deserve a couple of all blues to compensate. But in this case, we are guaranteed a legendary. So it must happen. There is no choice. There's no other option. So Balthus, Drug Lord is like a tanky epic, but he's not really that useful. So after this one, well, I guess we've gone through 40. So that means we're seven away from entering Mercy. So this will put us over, at least the last three, will put us into Mercy and we can, we can kind of see where to go from there. But most likely, if it's not in this 10 pop, it's going to be in the subsequent one. Oh, nope, we got it in this one. Here we go. Timmit the Fool and Samson the Masher. Okay, not exactly who we were looking for. And uh, I think that's literally on shard 201 so right after mercy we entered mercy and we got the legendaries right out of the gate so mercy has been reset as you'd expect and uh yeah timid the fool previous fusion champion so i do have him so this is a faction guardian for the banner lord it might be the third set because i do have a bunch of heliors we can check to confirm but he, honestly i think he's a fairly underrated champion he does have this polymorph proof um decrease the duration of all enemy buffs by three turns and 
in most cases most buffs are active for two turns unless you have lasting gifts which boosts it up to three and so even if that was the case he would decrease all of that to zero assuming it's not a protected buff from someone in a protection set or it's just not a protected buff in general so very strong if you use it in that way and also very much stronger if you pair him with Kaj of the Rye but he does have a weird synergy where like anti-synergy I should say where he places increased accuracy on this ability and then places the true fear but in most cases they're if you're planning to strip the buffs, then you can't true fear them because they probably have block debuffs up. And so you'd really want the increased accuracy to try and strip all the buffs off and then hopefully get the extra turn if you have Kaj of the Rye and then come back in and place the true fear. So a little bit of weird uh, order as far as his abilities go. And this is also on a four turn cooldown, but nonetheless, still pretty useful. And then he can heal himself on the A1 and he can fill a turn meter so he can cut in a little bit. And uh, that helps because he can also get provokes when fears expire if they're if he's paired with Kaj to the rye who i do have because i did go for her guaranteed so i haven't quite used him yet he's not booked but he is built i do use him a little bit unbooked in the curse city just as a little bit of cc because we do have the true fears and also he can strip off any buffs that happen to land on them so that's how i have him built i think in a supersonic set um so yeah he is not new but samson the masher is new and this is giving me mad erroneous vibes because he is a huge fan of this giant gorilla and i honestly don't remember exactly what he does i, I know i've seen him a lot in like the curse city as enemy waves and he absolutely claps if he gets turns so i can definitely understand that he can be a very very powerful hp based nuker but I, if i recall correctly he doesn't hit necessarily hard enough to just be an outright nuker but he is a good secondary nuker who can definitely start to clean up um, some of the lower level people from your primary nuker doing some damage. So on the A3 here, increase accuracy on all allies and increase crit damage and then grant an extra turn, notably on for three turns. So this is basically permanent because this is a four turn cooldown and he will place the buffs and then his turn ends. And so they will stay on there for the next three turns. And then this is the big AOE smack where he can remove all increased defense buffs before attacking. And then he'll place an extra hit if this kills an enemy. And this is why he hits super hard against your potentially squishy champions in the Curse City because he gets off this extra hit. He's also booting his crit damage and so he can just lay down the smacks if he happens to kill people and usually i think the enemy waves have like two of these so they go back to back and they can just wipe your entire team if they're if they get enough good hits and then he has a chance to stun on the a1 which synergizes horrendously with this passive where basically if you hit him at all more so with a critical hit but also just if you're just hitting him at all he can counter attack and it has a really really high chance to stun a 45 percent chance but it is a double hitter so it's probably like a 60 70 Ish percent chance of uh, landing the stun between the two hits so fairly high chance and basically always going to counter attack in a, in a practical situation so there you have it there is our result of the pogo i'm not going to say i'm super happy with it because you know again we didn't get anyone from our primary wish list or the secondary wish list which you which i usually don't mention but nonetheless we did walk away with two legendaries for the price of one but it only cost us 50 ancient charge which is fairly cheap in the long run and also i guess i forgot to mention anax is going to be used for epic empowerment so that makes my anax a little bit stronger so that is a nice icing on the top here so if we hop over to the guardian ring if these packs will go away we don't need to buy anything we already got our good luck so yeah banner lords okay yep so that is 30 accuracy and 30 resistance for all my legendaries which i honestly don't have that many of but you can see my army of heliors here <laughs> filling up the faction guardians and i get well i might swap those around just for aesthetics but uh, yeah 30 accuracy 30 resistance for banner lord so that helps timid obviously that helps helior um who is built in relatively high resist and honestly i, I really do think that i don't have that many banner lord legendaries i mean i guess more i mean more accuracy resistance on round rush rondo she doesn't really need it more accuracy on staltus is actually very useful more resistance on kaja is very useful as well so honestly i'm not i'm not i'm not mad about that extra accuracy for uh, killian the lucky so that is good for the cursed city so hey we'll take it extra stats for the legendaries and of course skinwalkers is the new one samson the master who is brand new on my account so we'll see if he's going to come in handy hp based nukers are hard to come by and they are fairly useful in the cursed city so i might be able to find a place uh, or stage that i couldn't do in the past that might now be enabled by his presence so i'm not going to say i'm disappointed in getting him overall all right so that's going to do it for this pogo session i honestly don't get to participate in the ancient ones as often because i'm usually just, i just happen to 
not be close to mercy. In this case, we kind of forced the situation by being a little bit more strategic. So that's kind of nice that we got a payoff in the end for that a little bit of strategy. And now we are basically free to pull for 2x Ancients, which should be coming up this weekend. I'm going to have to make some more space. Hopefully there's some champion training where I can burn some of these rares away. But uh, yeah, now we're set up with a fresh mercy, which is the best situation to be in going into a 2x Ancients. So we'll see what that uh, holds this coming weekend. Let me know in the comment section down below if you were participating in this pogo event and what you were able to get from your double legendary summons and as always if you did enjoy the video then be sure to hit that like button down below and feel free to subscribe to the channel for more content just like this one in the future thanks for watching and have a good one